going on guys? Vincent here from the creativedojo.net. Welcome to another video tutorial. Today in After Effects, I'm gonna show you guys how to create this kind of digital screen look right within After Effects. No third-party plugins needed, no third-party products needed. Now, a portion of this video is actually sponsored by AE Juice. More on that later. But I wanna let you guys know that they are having their annual Black Friday sale in which they are selling their I Want It All bundle, which is over 70 plus packages and products, close to $9,000 worth of products, for a special price of 149 they even have a special upgrade pricing for existing i want it all buyers and of course all their products right now are 50 percent off they create some awesome products links in the video description down below check it out so back in after effects we have our digital screen and in the past if i wanted to create a digital screen i would probably just slap one on a grid pixelate everything and then add a chromatic aberration and that was usually good enough but it wasn't until I saw a juice digital screen constructor that I was kind of like wow that looks pretty good you know why doesn't mine look like that and after dissecting it I'm going to share with you guys kind of what I learned to kind of create the small little nuances in a digital screen to make it seem very organic and kind of make it seem as if you're recording your screen with your camera for example so there's a lot of nuances and fine little details let's go ahead and hop right in here I'm going to create a new 1080p comp we'll call this main comp and hit okay and at this point you want to drag in your media asset whether it's your video your photo your screenshot your screen recording whatever it is just make it a little bit bigger if possible so we have some room to work with let's go ahead and create a camera i'm going to create a 35 millimeter camera doesn't really matter enable depth of field hit okay and i'm going to make sure that my switches and modes are selected and go ahead and make sure that my layer is a 3d layer for my digital asset and so once we have that, I'm gonna hit C on the keyboard or bring up the orbit tool and just kind of orbit around, find a cool little angle just to kind of start off with here. I'm gonna zoom in, cool. So that's a pretty good start. You can always play around with it and animate the camera, whatever you wanna do. For the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a new adjustment layer. And we need to soften this thing up. So I'm gonna call this pixelate. And right now everything's very, very sharp. It's a screenshot after all. So let's go ahead and apply a mosaic effect under stylize and that will kind of pixelate everything. Now I'm using a 1080p comp, so I'm gonna enter 1920 by 1080, and that will give me the exact same look as what I had. I like to downgrade it by about 90%, so I'm gonna do asterisk 0.9, and that will just kind of down res this thing a little bit, so it's a little bit pixelated. Um, so if I zoom in here, this is the before, and this is the after. It's very subtle but it does add a little bit of pixelation to things just so it's not super crisp and sharp. And of course you can always down these values a little bit if you wanted to, uh, but it's a very, very subtle thing just to kind of create a softened look. So I'm gonna go ahead and create another adjustment layer and I'm gonna call this dim. So if you notice, whenever you record your digital screen, the whites don't really look right. It's either blown out completely or it's very, very dim because you're recording your LCD or your LED screen or whatever it is. And so what that usually means is that the highlights are usually kind of capped off. So to do that's very, very easy. Just go ahead and bring in the curves effect and just go ahead and bring down the highlights so it's not so poppy. And just by doing that, you know, you, you get more of a realistic look. You know, you're dimming the whites a little bit, dimming the highlights a little bit so that it's not as poppy as if you're recording a screen on your camera. And the main thing that kind of shapes this whole thing and brings everything together is actually the kind of pixel effect that we're about to create right here. So let's go ahead and create a new composition. We'll make it the same size as our comp 1080p and we'll call this color split. So basically we're doing kind of like an RGB split, but doing it manually here. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer, new solid, and we'll call this red. And uh, we'll make it a little bit wider in width than our comp. So if I'm doing a 1920 by 1080 comp, maybe make it 2000, for example. And we'll make this first color red. So that would be 25500 for RGB. And we're kind of emulating an RGB screen and creating those small little split pixels. I'm gonna go ahead and apply a Venetian blinds, drag it into the layer. I'm gonna go ahead and decrease the width to maybe like three or four or so, depending on your pixel size. And I'm gonna go ahead and increase the transition completion to, I would say probably around 80 or so. You're creating these small little split scans right here, maybe even up to 90 or so, just like that. Cool, we'll go ahead and duplicate this. We'll go into layer settings and we'll change this to G and we'll make this kind of like a green color. That should be zero, 2550. 
nice little green hit okay and if you missed it i duplicated the layer by hitting Control or command d just to duplicate the layer so now we created a green version of it and then i want to go ahead and just hit p on the keyboard and i have my position split in the default version of a 2023 um, but basically just go to the x position or the x component and just shift it by a couple pixels just like that so now we have a red and a green i'm going to duplicate one last time and you guessed it we'll call it b we'll go to layer settings we'll call this b and we'll change this to a blue now you could technically do two for five in the blue but i think if you kind of shift it to a little bit more of a cyan it looks a little bit better in my opinion so somewhere around here i think gives a better look hit p on the keyboard again and we're going to shift this just a little bit more so you're kind of creating a split rgb look so it's just kind of like a pixel screen right here now I have noticed that with this Venetian blinds effect, it creates kind of a dark shadow on this side. I'm not really sure why, even with the width adjustments and stuff, you get this weird banding darkening effect, but it doesn't seem to affect the final result. So I kind of just ignore it, but just something to keep in mind here. You can also use the grid effect, which we're about to use right now. I'm going to go ahead and apply a new adjustment layer. We'll call this grid and I'm going to go ahead and apply the grid effect to this thing. Now the grid effect is kind of weird to use, but I'm gonna go ahead and change the border to one and uh, we'll make it black. In blending mode, we'll go ahead and do normal. So that will just kind of apply it on and it creates these little black grids and I want to adjust it to create pixels basically. So this is the weird part where you can go ahead and play around with the anchor to kind of decrease it down just a little bit like that. And then we'll go ahead and play around with the corner just to create a very pixelated um, kind of look right here. So if you zoom in at 100%, this is kind of what you're seeing. And this whole effect drives everything. So if you wanted to create larger pixels to get a really pixelated effect, like you can also do this with this effect and just kind of play around with the values and everything. We've created these really nice, these RGB pixels right here. And so we'll go back to the main comp and we'll go ahead and drag in our color split into everything, probably above the dim. And as you can see, our color split black doesn't look too hot. So we'll go ahead and um, play around with this. You see that we have our X lines. We'll go ahead and bring it all in here. Get it really close to the anchor. So nine, six, two would probably work. There we go. And we'll go back here. And so now we have something like this. I'm gonna go ahead and hit F4 or toggle the modes and go ahead and we'll apply it as an overlay. That will just kind of give us the kind of texture that we want. I'm gonna go ahead and hit tune the keyboard, kind of lower down the opacity just a little bit so we get some nice texture. And we'll go ahead and duplicate this again one more time. And we'll change this blending mode to like, a, I found that color dodge works well, color works well, hard light works well. Um, but a lot of the dodges work pretty well and we'll bring the opacity back up here. Back in the grid comp, I changed the border to one and a feather of 1.5 or so. And that will kind of soften the look just a little bit. And if you zoom in here, we get this really nice kind of square pixel effect. We get some kind of RGB split around the edges of all of our pixels. So you can go into the color split and mess around with it. And if you notice, if we go in here and we change the blending mode to let's say color, you can get a really different result. Same with like hard light. You can get a lot of different interesting results and in the different types of screens that you want whether it's analog or digital just by playing around with the different blending modes and get pretty interesting looks let's stick to the classic color dodge for now i mean it looks okay so we have our look it looks a little bit tinted a little bit so let's go ahead and apply a correction let's go to adjustment layer we'll call this cc for color correction and let's go ahead and apply curves bring it in there and maybe even a tint effect and bring that in there Turn this off for now and so if you look at most screens they kind of have a blue tint to it i mean they're known for blue light and so we can do this by kind of increasing the blues just a little bit in the highlights and that way you kind of get that blue look that everyone's trying to avoid with their blue light glasses and whatnot um so kind of increase the blues just a little bit so we get an interesting look and you can always play around with the different channels i kind of like to bring the greens down just a little bit um so now it looks more blue they have kind of like this weird green tint just like that and you can play around with the contrast and everything um 
kind of pump it up just a little bit. And then I would like to tint it just a little bit as well, maybe by like 5% or so, so it's not too saturated. So before and after. The last finishing touch is the chromatic aberration. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new adjustment layer and we will call this chromatic aberration. And if you guys aren't aware, there is kind of like a native chromatic aberration effect under immersive video and it's called VR chromatic aberrations. Drag that in. I'm gonna go ahead and change the aberration red to like two, maybe aberration to like two and just kind of zoom in and you can tweak to your heart's content. I kind of like to add a little bit of blue. So it's a little bit more obvious and I don't like the green. So I kind of tone that back just a little bit. And so we have something like this, kind of a subtle red and blue or kind of like a bright cyan look. And that will kind of get things kind of a nice little distortion that you kind of want in your chromatic aberrations. And you still get a nice kind of color split in your pixels from our color split pre comps. We can go into the camera. We can go to the camera options and depth of field. We can go ahead and play around with that. We'll go ahead and crank up the aperture to like 18 or so. And then we'll play around with the focus distance. Kind of bring it in and adjust it just where we kind of want things in focus. You can always crank this up just a little bit more and adjust the focus distance. Now, one final finishing touch that I found in the digital screen constructor is that they added kind of like a glare right over here. And that really, really kind of brings it together. So for that, let's go ahead and create a new composition. We'll go ahead and make that same 1080p comp. We'll call this glare. Hit OK. And for this one here, I'm going to create a generic shape. So I'm going to hit the pen tool, make sure that stroke is deselected. And I'm going to create kind of like a cyan blue type of color, just like this. And we'll just kind of draw like a blob here. It doesn't really matter. We're just going to blur it out anyways at the very end. But kind of create a blob like that. We'll go ahead and click away and we'll go ahead and create kind of like a green look just like this and we'll go ahead and maybe create a different shape make sure that the thing's selected so we can create a new shape and then we'll go ahead and create one last shape and this is going to be kind of like a warm sun glare so maybe like a yellow or a warm orange just something to kind of give it that natural light and i'll kind of rearrange the orders just a little bit you know something like this it looks really hideous we're going to go ahead and apply an adjustment layer and we'll call this blur and we're just going to blur everything out here so we're going to apply a gaussian blur under blur and sharpen now if you want better results you should probably blur the individual shapes alone then this tutorial i'm just going to go ahead and blur everything out evenly and make sure the repeat edge pixels is unselected and so you're just going to create kind of a blur now what you don't want is kind of like a big circle you know you do want some blur but you kind of want some shape as well so I'm gonna go in here and kind of tweak things up so we don't just get a blob of a circle. Maybe like right over here or so. And you can distort it, you can add your turbulent displays or whatever you wanna do. In fact, let's go ahead and do a mesh warp. Bring that in and we can just kind of give it some, some, some shape here. And maybe put it before. And let's go ahead and go back to our main comp and we'll drag in our glare. So right now it kind of looks hideous. I'll change the blending mode from normal to overlay or soft light, either works. And we'll go ahead and tone down the opacity. So it's kind of hard to tell in this demonstration. I'm not really sure how well it's showing up in the YouTube compression, but that subtle glare, that kind of hint of a warm kind of greenish tone kind of adds that nice detail to the screen. Here in the original one, you can kind of see it right over here. I'm going to turn the glare on and off. This is off and this is on. Just a very slight color distortion. Dark blue here, kind of a warm orange right here to really sell the look that you're kind of shooting it on a camera almost. And so just like that, you kind of have that glare look. You'll probably need to go ahead and adjust the color corrections, kind of play around with it. But that's kind of the overall idea on how to create a digital screen, kind of the basic concepts. Of course, you can go even deeper into this. Now, if you guys create screens all the time, you may want to check out AE Juice's digital screen constructor product. It's a very cool product. A lot of stuff that I learned in this tutorial is actually from looking at their stuff. And as we can see, you can kind of see the glare right here on the screen. Very convincing effect. They have a lot of cool stuff going on, a lot more detail, a lot more stuff than I should in this video tutorial. Um, but 
a lot of stuff like buttons and creating headlines for news articles, Twitter sites. So if you're doing like documentary style stuff or social media stuff, this can be very, very handy for kind of highlighting stuff for news, for tech news, um, photos. They have different looks for the screen as well. So we just created one of the looks, um, but there are different types of look, very pixelated looks up close, low res, high res, presets for typing and search and sites, whole bunch of stuff here, Twitter, and even UI enhancements if you do like UI stuff. So it's a pretty cool product. They have other really awesome products. For example, I really like their neon glitch stuff. If you had to create this stuff from scratch, it can be a huge pain, but it's all drag and drop. But the very intuitive interface would be the AE Juice Pack Manager. It includes fast previewing. You can download products on the fly, favorite them. A lot of them are in 4K. Um, awesome effects, footage for your projects and for your elements here. So really cool lens flare elements, glass elements to really create that nice look. You can even use these kind of prism looks into the screen. That will probably create even, an even more realistic kind of glare look. And of course, you guys know that I love my glitches. So they have awesome glitch packs, a lot of distortions, cool stuff for transitions, YouTube videos, titles, whole bunch of stuff here. This is one of my favorite packs is the glitch pack. A lot of glitch elements as well that you can layer on top of things to kind of create really interesting, cool distortion effects. Um, so that's AE Juice here. They've been an awesome sponsor of the channel for a while now. They create awesome products. Definitely check it out below. And again, all their products are 50% off right now for their Black Friday sale. Links down below in the video description. If you guys like videos like this, give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe for more videos like this. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.